Hello everyone, welcome to today's video. If you're new to the channel, my name is Joey and this is my YouTube channel, Bertoni Motors. It's a place I can talk about cars, motorcycles. Basically, if it's got an engine, I'm gonna talk about it. In today's video, I wanna talk about my new 2020 Bronco. Uh, I've had it for a few weeks now and it's already time for me to start thinking about modifying it and what my first few accessories are going to be for the truck. Truck SUV, whatever you wanna call it. Uh, I bought some WeatherTech floor mats over there, which I've had for a few weeks. I actually ordered them back in October thinking my Bronco would be delivered by then. Unfortunately, it took a few more weeks than expected to get here, but I haven't installed them yet, so we're gonna do that first. I'm gonna give you my first reactions on that. But then we have to go to Jeff's Bronco Graveyard, which is a very deceiving name. But if you're in the Bronco community, you know exactly the company that I'm talking about. They have basically all Bronco stuff ever for any generation Bronco. They're amazing. They're in Michigan, about 45 minutes west of here. I'm gonna drive out there. I'm gonna pick up a part that I need uh, for Saturday. Saturday, I'm heading to my first kind of like Bronco off-road. It's not off-rodeo, it's not like sponsored by Ford, but it is sponsored or put on by the Bronco Association of Michigan out in Holly Oaks, which is like a OHV off-road park. I'm really excited, but I need to go get a flag mount for the Bronco. And since the vehicle is still pretty new, there aren't a lot of options, so they have one. And I decided just to drive out there, meet the crew and pick it up. In addition to that, I wanna talk through what I have planned for my little baby overlanding rig, talking about the roof rack, the tent, the lights, motorcycle rack. Oh, as in another accessory as well, we're also gonna go look at motorcycles today because I need a dirt bike. Can't have a Bronco without a dirt bike, or I gotta carry that around. So, all that sounds interesting. Let's open up these boxes from WeatherTech over there, and let's install them, and then let's get driving. All right, guys. All right, everyone, so it's been a few hours. I've been a terrible job at keeping you guys up to date with what I've just been doing. Um, we went to the gr Jeff's graveyard. We picked up that part of the Bronco. Unfortunately, the tool that came in the toolkit with the Bronco and those bolts aren't 100% compatible. I don't know why. It seems like those bolts are just either cheaply made or I don't know, but I know where it needs to go. I need to go home, I need to install it, and hopefully that's the end of that saga. It shouldn't be too difficult. Then I went on, went to look at some motorcycles, trying to figure out what is the best motorcycle to put on the back of the Bronco. I don't know. I was originally thinking like a Yamaha Tenere 700, but now that I'm thinking about it, that might be too big, too heavy. Trying to think of what else is out there. The only reason why I was thinking about that or like a KTM 690 or the Husqvarna 701 is because it has an engine that has a longer service interval. So instead of like a normal dirt bike, which is like 10 to 15 hours of riding, it's more like 10,000 miles of riding. So it's just easier overall. The Tenere, I have one on order just in case I do end up going for it. They're really hard to get. I don't know when it's coming. That's kind of an issue. Uh, then I went to Power City Motorsports, which or Motor City Power Sports. I always get that confused because I needed to get the flag that we talked about for the front of the Bronco because we're going to that OHV park on Saturday with the Bronco Club, but they didn't have the one that I needed. It needs to be a square flag. So right now I'm going up north and I, I'm doing it now. I don't know why I could just do it Saturday morning, but I said, why not? I got nothing else going on today. 
I'm gonna go drive up there. I'm gonna see if they need, since it's like attached to that park, they know what kind of flag I need. And I guess it needs, instead of like a diamond flag, it needs to be a square flag. I don't know. I don't know if it's like that big of a deal, but I decided why not take the Bronco up there, take a drive and all of that. Now with all of that out of the way, let's talk about updates. What am I gonna do for the Bronco? So as you guys know, my goal for this Bronco is to build it out to like a little micro overlanding rig. I wanna go out to Denver and Utah, California towards the end of spring and kind of just do like a nice little drive around uh, camping, taking photos. There's a few motorcycle races that I wanna go out there and photograph and just, you know, reconnect with some friends now that I don't have a job. If you guys don't know, I haven't really made this public, but I quit my job a few days ago. Yesterday was my first day. Today was my first day officially, though, so of course that's why I'm looking at motorcycles and stuff like that. Um, and like, I've got a van on order. If you guys have been new to the channel for, if you're new, new to the channel, I've got a four trains of van that I ordered last uh, September, October, and it's like a year away. It, they, it's basically September, October of this year that it's gonna be delivered. So I just thought, you know, I might as well, I don't know why I'm saying that. Um, I might as well build out the Bronco to have a little more outdoor fun and not just be stuck in a house until then because i don't really want to do that so up first i think i have to figure out a roof rack situation my bronco i didn't order it with the roof rack and i'm regretting it basically every day since uh i can buy the roof rack from any ford dealer they're even online already for a pretty ch a pretty good discount compared to what they are from the factory I think it's like 550 to buy one from the factory versus like 230 that i've seen them on ebay and they're ford uh authentic parts so it's the same thing I'm gonna put that on it, then I gotta figure out a rooftop tent. There are now a few other companies making rooftop racks um, for the first few weeks, few months. No one's made a two-door rack, and now people are starting to do that. Thank goodness. But they're expensive. They're like $2,200 for just the rack. And they look cool and stuff and big and beefy, but like knowing that I'm probably only gonna have this truck for a, a nine months to a year, I don't really feel like investing that much money, honestly. So I'm gonna put the normal roof rack on it. Then I gotta figure out a tent. Uh, I was going back and forth with the idea of like getting a, just a normal tent. I don't have one for the ground versus like a, a rooftop tent. And I've got a few different ideas on why I would go with the rooftop over the ground tent. And it's because I don't have a lot of space inside my Bronco. So anything that I need to put in here is going to take up space, right? So if I put a, why is everyone driving shitty? So if I put a tent in the back of my car, that means I have to put the sleeping bag in the back of the car, put the mattress pad back here. There's a lot of things that I have to put back here, um, like in my in the vehicle itself, that origin that I if I had the tent, I could put up top. Right? So think about that. So in the rooftop tent, it has the mattress, so that's a piece off. The sleeping bag can be compressed in almost every rooftop tent that I've looked at. So it's constantly just stays up there. Um it just, it makes a lot of sense to do it, but the thing is that they're expensive. A soft, so there's like two kinds of hard, or two kinds of rooftop kinds. It's like the, the soft vinyl kind, and then like a hard kind. The hard kind has a lot of benefits because you can mount things on top of it, so like a shovel and traction boards and stuff like that. The soft top, and those start at like two grand. The soft tents start at like 1200, but you can't really mount anything on top of it. On top of that, it all, they also just like don't look as cool, which, you know, it's a big issue. It's something you gotta think about, right? Oh. Why is everyone's car, that car should not be on the road. Uh, ba -ba -ba -ba. So yeah, so rooftop tent, that's definitely happening with the rack. And then I wanna start thinking about putting lights on. I don't wanna like change up the front. I don't think I'm ever going to be in the spot where I'm aggressively off-roading to the point where I'm going to need like full recovery gear. I don't think I'm gonna need a winch ever. That being said, like you never know when you're going to need it, but I'm just, I don't think I'm going to be going off-road at that at that level. While I am gonna go like dirt roads, I don't think I'm ever going to go big rock piles, stuff like that. That's just not something that I'm interested in. I'd much rather just do that on my motorcycle, to be fair. What else? Oh yeah, so no winch. I don't think I'm gonna upgrade the, the this guy should not be driving. Um, I don't think I'm gonna 
gonna be upgrading the front grill or a bumper. I might get a bar, like a bash bar, and then maybe some lights up front. God, this guy scares the shit out of me. Ooh. But then I was thinking like, okay, they make cool light kits that I can get for, and there's like a, on top of the mirrors, on top of the mirrors, like where, what are we doing, guy? So on these mirrors, there's like Ford accessory ports. Basically like they have like a, a place made for the mirrors to like screw onto, which are really cool. Really well done by Ford for being smart about that. Uh, I kind of want some spotlights just to have, oh, I should be turning left. I fucked that up. Oh, did I though? I'm just gonna wait for this guy to go. I haven't really done one of these talking while driving kind of things in a while, and I know I realize why I don't do it. I'm not very good at this. Also, keep touching my beard. What else, what else? So yeah, I wanna do some lights up front. It'd be cool to do like go crazy and do like LED bars behind the grill and stuff like that, but I think that's a little too much. Uh, I don't wanna be too Jeep bro, right? With the angry eyes. And then something down the road, depending on how long I keep the Bronco for is, so I want to paint the grill race red as well. I think that looks sick. I've seen a few Broncos over at SEMA that had it. There was one in particular had white wheels and like this like chalk green color and the front grill is painted the same color and it looks so good. Just like so vintage. I really like it. Look at this Ford van. Damn. Boom. Solo vans. One day, one day my van will come. From there, like working my way back, I'm gonna be taking my rear seats out. I already know that's happening. It's just a matter of time. Um, the reason why is I'm gonna build a platform back there where I can easily uh, put totes. Basically, like my entire life is gonna be put into like four totes, like one like camping tote, one cooking tote, one clothing, one motorcycle gear tote, and then like my camera stuff will probably be my driver's side. Um, a lot of, I don't, I don't know where the fuck I am. A lot of real shitty rust buckets around here. So like besides that, I don't know what this is in the road. Wow. And then uh, I'm talking with a few battery companies right now. It's like Jackery, Goal Zero, things like that. I'm trying to get them to sponsor me and give me one of those battery packs. Just so like when I'm on the road, I can power up my GoPro and my drone and my camera and all of that stuff. Oh, that's the Magic Motorsports that burned down. Oh, different one. The guy, I was just talking to the guy at the motorcycle dealer, and he was like, yeah, Magic Motorsports up the road burnt down. And I was like, isn't Magic the name of the KTM dealer? And he was like, I don't know what they have, but it burnt down. We're talking about two different dealers. So on top of the battery, I'm gonna need some kind of like refrigeration system. Dometic is kind of like the go-to brand for that. Um, going to probably get one of those probably one of the smaller ones because I'm gonna have to like change it up for what I'm gonna need in the van anyway so it just kind of makes sense to get a cheaper one now I might even try to find one on Amazon that has a good return policy you know what I mean that good old Home Depot Depot hustle I don't know what that's called but you know what I'm talking about buy a tool use it turn it back in so smart um, and then from the back, so I have a Moto Tote, Moto Tote, I think that's what it's called, which is the Moto Rack that goes in the back of a hitch that I can put on my motorcycle sideways. I think that's real interest. That's good. That's great, right? They are like kind of like the well-known one. My friend Jackal Fox, if you guys follow him, follow him on Instagram, Jackal Fox or Jackal Moto. Uh, he is, he's a hell of a photographer and spectacular photo editor. That's what makes him like really stand out. So editor, is that editor group? Uh, he has one, he puts his MV Agusta on the back of his BMW M5, M5, X5, X5M, whatever it is. Uh, and he turned me on to it. So I got one of those and I don't have a bike to put on the back of it. That's stupid, one day. What else, what else? Oh, um, Justin, I think his name's Justin McBride. I think that's it. He had something that was real interesting on the back of his rear tire that like it wrapped around the rear tire and gave him like storage space above it. It's like a giant like Pelican case above it. And he like put his like say his uh, traction, traction boards and shovel and stuff like that on that. 
I'm probably gonna get that, it's like 300 bucks. And then inside, not just some like accessory ports, a better way to like hold my phone for like trails. Um, there's like an accessory port in the middle of the dash and I need to figure out what I need to use to like screw that in. It's very, it, it looks like, it looks like a NATO ring or something like that. Something that you would mount on top of a gun would fit onto it. Oh my God, there's a student driver just driving like, oh, I guess he's going to speed limit and everyone else is just driving like a dick. That sucks. I would hate to learn how to student drive in Michigan. I don't trust people. But yeah, I think the biggest one right now is just figuring out the rooftop tent. Because like everything else I can kind of do as I go. Um, I don't really need to do anything else. I just need a place to sleep. And I don't know if I could, but I think maybe if I like push my... I push my floor, front seat forward and like lean it forward, I might be able to lay down in a very uncomfortable way. And I don't want to take my front seat off because you know, I might have friends. I might, one day, I might have friends who might want to come with me in the Bronco. So I don't want to do that. I need something on top or I need to figure out a tent. The issue is that like tents are, tents are expensive. We talked about that a little bit. Ground tents are, I think they're, you know, like a nice three season ground tent, like $200 versus a three season rooftop tent, like we're talking like two grand and like a hard top's like three grand. It just depends on how much camping I'm going to do, like how long these road trips are going to be, all of that. Um, I think I'm kind of like rambling at this point. So rest of the video, we are going to head to Holly Off-Road. I think that's what it's called. We're gonna go get that flag. I'm gonna need that and then we're going to get I don't know if that flag's even gonna fit in my truck. I gotta look at that. That's gonna be it's gonna be a dumb situation if it doesn't. And then I'm going to show you guys how to install that piece onto the front of the Bronco to hold the flag. Uh, hopefully it uh, fits in right. Gardner, I think it's in right now. All right, let's uh, let's keep driving.